Chapter 14 Now Iob the son of Zeruiah perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. And Iob sent to Tekoa, and fetched thence a wise woman, and said unto her, I pray thee feign thyself to be a mourner, and put on now mourning apparel, and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had a long time mourned for the dead. And come to the king, and speak on this manner unto him. So Iob put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Teco spake to the king, she fell on her face to the ground, and did obeisance, and said, Help, O king. And the king said, Vento her, What aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow woman, and mine husband is dead. And thy handmaid had two sons, and they two straw together in the field, and there was none to part them. But the one smote the other, and slew him. And behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid, and they said, Delure him that smote his brother, that we may kill him for the life of his brother whom he slew. And we will destroy thee hire also, and so they shall quench my coal which is left, and shall not load to my husband neither name nor remainder upon the earth. And the king said unto the woman, Go to thine house, and I will do charge concerning thee. And the woman of Teco said unto the king, My lord, O king, the iniquity be on me, and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Whosoever saith out unto thee, Bring him to me, and he shall not touch thee any more. Then said she, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer the ruiners of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lueth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, Let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak one word unto my lord the king. And he said, Say on. And the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? For the king doth speak this thing as one which is faulty, in that the king doth not fetch home again his banished. For we must needs die, and are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered vp again, neither doth God respect any person, yet doth he do's means, that his banished be not expelled from him. Now therefore that I am come to speak of this thing then to my lord the king, it is because the people how made me afraid, and thy handmaids said, I will now speak then to the king, it may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. For the king will hear, to delure his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me, and my son together out of the inheritance of God. Then thine handmaid said, The word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable, for as an angel of God, so is my lord the king to discern good and bad, therefore the lord thy God will be with thee. Then the king answered and said, Vento the woman, hide not from me, I pray thee the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Iob with thee in all this? And the woman answered and said, As thy cell lueth, my lord the king, none can turn to the right hand or to the left from aught that my lord the king hath spoken, for thy Sarah and Iob he bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. To fetch about this form of speech hath thy Sarah and Iob done this thing, and my lord is wise according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to know all things that are in the earth. And the king said unto Job, Behold now, I have done this thing, go therefore, bring the young man Absalom again. And Iob fell to the ground on his face, and bowed himself, and thanked the king. And Iob said, Today thy servant knoweth that I have found grace in thy sight, my lord O king, in that the king hath fulfilled the request of his servant. So Iob arose, and went to Jeshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him turn to his own house, and let him not see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, and saw not the king's face. But in all Israel there was none to be so much praised as Absalom. 
for his beauty, from the sole of his foot you into the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he pulled his head, for it was at your year's end that he pulled it, because the hair was hoey on him. Therefore he pulled it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels after the king's weight. And when to Absalom there were born three sons, and one daughter, whose name was Tamar, she was a woman of a fair countenance. So Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Iob, to how sent him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. Therefore he said unto his servants, See, Iob's field is near mine, and he hath barley there, go, and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Job arose, and came to Absalom unto his house, and said unto him, Wherefore how thy servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Iob, Behold, I sent unto thee, saying, Come hither, that I may send thee to the king to say, Wherefore am I come from Jeshur? It had been a good for me to how been a there still. Now therefore let me see the king's face, and if there be any iniquity in me, let him kill me. So Iob came to the king, and told him. And when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king, and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. And the king kissed Absalom. Chapter 15 And it came to pass after this, that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose, beep early, and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called then to him, and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy Zeruint is of one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said then to him, See, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said more roar, O oh, that I were made yedge in the land, that you a man which hath any suit or cause, might come then to me, and I would do him Eustace. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand, and took him, and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel, that came to the king for judgment, so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass a after forty years, that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode at Jeshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he rose, and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as ye hear a sound of the trumpet, then ye shall say, Absalom regneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, thou its counselor from his city, you and from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices, and the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to Dod, saying, the hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And Dod said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Rise, and let verses flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he our take verses suddenly, and bring you upon verses, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Pelethites, and all the Giddites, six hundred men, which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then said the king to Atai the Gittite, Wherefore gost thou also with verses? Return to thy place, and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger, and also an exile. 
Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go VP and down with verses? Seeing I go whither I may return thou and take back thy brethren, mercy and truth be with thee. And did I answer the king, and said, As the Lord lueth, and as my lord the king lueth. Surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, you in there also will, will thy servant be. And Dodd said to a tide, Go, and pass a oar. And did I the Giddite passed a oar, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice. And all the people passed o'er, the king also himself passed o'er, the brook Kidron, and all the people passed o'er, toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, Sadak also, and all the Lewits were with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God, and they set down the ark of God. And Abiathar went Phipi, until all the people had done passing out of the city. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find for in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again, and shew me both it, and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I, let him do to me, as seemeth good vento him. The king said also vento Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahamaz thy son, and Ianathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness, until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And Dot went VP by the ascent of Mount Eliot, and wept as he went VP, and had his head covered, and he went barefoot. And all the people that was with him covered Yuri man his head, and they went VP, weeping as they went VP. And one told Dawud, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And Dawud said, O Lord, I pray thee turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And it came to pass, say, that when Dawud was come to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the ark it came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. Unto whom Dawud said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city, and save unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been a thy father's servant hitherto. So will I now also be thy servant, then mayst thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok, and Abiathar the priests? Therefore it shall be, that what things so your house shalt hear out of the king's house. Thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, they held there with them their two sons, Ahamaz Sidok's son, and Inoth and Abiathar's son, and by them ye shall send Ventomi Yuri thing that ye can hear. So Hushai Dawid's friend came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Chapter 16 And when Dawid was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba the servant of Mephibosheth met him with a couple of asses saddled, and found them two hundred loaves of bread, and an hundred bunches of raisins, and an hundred of summer fruits, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, The asses be for the king's household to ride on, and the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine, that such as be faint in the wilderness may drink. And the king said, and where is thy master's son? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he abideth at Jerusalem, for he said, Today shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertain unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I humbly beseech thee that I may find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when King Dod came to Bayurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul whose name was Shimei the son of Jerah, he came forth, and cursed still as he came. And he cast stones at Dod, and at all the servants of King Dawid, and all the people, and all the mighty men were on his right hand, and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. 
The Lord hath returned fond thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord hath delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son, and behold, thou art taken to thy mischief, because thou art a bloody man. Then said Abishai the son of Zeriav unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go o'er, I pray thee, and take off his head. And the king said, What how I to do with you, ye sons of Zeriah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, Cursed out. Who shall then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And Dawid said to Abishai, and to all his servants, Behold, my son which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benayamite do it? Let him alone, and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and that the Lord will requite good for his cursing this day. And as Dod and his men went by the way, Shimei went along on the hilly side or against him, and cursed as he went, and threw stones at him, and cast dust. And the king, and all the people that were with him, came weary, and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with him. And it came to pass when Hushai the archite, Dod's friend, was come then to Absalom, that Hushai said then to Absalom, God saw the king, God saw the king. And Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? And Hushai said unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with him will I abide. And again, whom should I sorrow? Should I not sorrow in the presence of his son? As I house Sirud in thy father's presence, so will I be in thy presence. Then said Absalom to Ahithophel, Do counsel among you what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go in unto thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house, and all Israel shall hear that thou art a port of thy father. Then shall the hands of all that are with thee be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house. And Absalom went in vento his father's concubines, in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was as if a man had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with Dod and with Absalom.